Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Pius Ejolame. I'm an artist, a sculptor to be uh, precise. Um, to me, art is life, and life is art. Um, art is used to run commentary, social commentary, uh, religious commentary, political commentary. But my art is strictly for aesthetics. I build my art um, to create beauty in homes. And um, I work with uh, natural materials. I do a lot of research on the matter, uh, natural materials. Uh, and my latest uh, uh, product or experiment is uh, using granite uh, chips to create art forms. And that is, uh, this is one of the works that I've just uh, created. It's a ballet uh, dancer. Uh, I try to bring these uh, pieces together, glue them, and create an art form that is uh, aesthetically, um, uh, aesthetically uh, for aesthetics in our homes in offices and uh, uh, private buildings. Uh, I build uh, small sculptures and I also build a, a garden sculpture. Um, I found out that um, we have these uh, natural materials in our environment in abundance. And um, I also found out that uh, majorly the granite chips are used for buildings and uh, for construction sites. But I felt that uh, it can be put into contemporary use by way of material research. And that was how I came about uh, this uh, uh, research that I've just done uh, recently. Uh, well, I, I expect, uh, I, I want to expand knowledge in this area, especially in, in the area of material research. And I want to encourage artists uh, to look at their environments and look at those things that are common there that they can put into material research to be able to tell their stories in a visual form. Um, our environment is so rich in these ma uh, natural materials and they are more or less of no cost. They are more or less of no cost to the artist. So we can get these materials, put them together to be able to create the, the visual experiences that they can use to tell stories, document our uh, history, uh, as well as for aesthetic purposes, uh, which I, I stand for. Um, today, uh, art materials are very expensive. You find out that uh, buying these materials is almost out of reach to most of our students, our artists alike. So, and you find out that um, that is why the patronage is so low. Because when you have to buy imported materials to do your work, the cost of that work will be so expensive that the collectors will run away from you. So, it is better for us to come back home, look at our natural environment, look at the materials that are available there, and see how we can put them into contemporary use. Uh, thank you. My name is Dr. Anade Bongwe Adenisoye. I'm from the Department of Fine Arts. I'm a painter, but at the same time, I work with uh, META. Uh, art generally is a means of uh, communication because when you look at uh, life, generally you will discover that there is nothing about life that is not of art because the Bible made us to understand from the perspective of the scripture that God made this and made that. So everything about uh, life is creation. And therefore, I am uh, uh, introducing my work. The one I have here is a metal piece, and it's talking about uh, the oil wealth of Nigeria, and the mat is a material exploration because uh, the, I'm using blocks of metal to depict the three 
uh, tribes in Nigeria, you can you see them, you see the Yoruba, you see the Igbo, and you see the Hausa, and all these are mounted on a pipe. And that simply means that the pipe carries the crude oil. Because the title is Trail of Oil Wealth. The Trail of Oil Wealth that Nigeria is a blessed nation with, uh, with crude oil that flows within the earth crust. But the question is that how have we been able to annex this to the benefit of uh, the masses? And so that is the message this artwork is passing, that there is a lot of mismanagement of such a natural uh, uh, blessing to a nation. But nevertheless, I am just uh, saying that as an artist, you are free to explore any material that you like that is available. Because today, we all know that uh, things are very expensive, especially those ones that are imported. But because all, most of these things are their waste to wealth, they are found objects, you can put them together to make a composition that will make a statement and equally speak to your, uh, to your audience. And that is exactly what um, I have done. But to, to, to summarize it all, art is about creativity, and not just being creative, but be able to be creative about the use of your material. You don't need to spend a fortune to be able to achieve an artwork, but you can go around and just pick objects that you will put together that will be able to give you what you want to make the statement that you want to make. And at the end of the day, the art will not be as expensive as uh, people uh, thought it to be. And these are what we are passing to the students, that there is need for you to look very close to your environment and see what you can use to make your statement without uh, really going for imported material. Because art is about you, and it's about your environment. And God bless you. Thank you. My name is uh, Dr. Adiola Balogun, uh, HOD uh, Final Department. School of Art, Design and Printing, Yabak Lab Technology. Uh, the show we're having today is themed uh, connecting, the, uh, connecting the dots. Uh, in the first place, we want to look at what art is all about. Art could be described as uh, uh, um, a medium of projecting both, I mean, either modern or the critical issues in our society uh, through the eye of the of an artist, and this could be achieved or realized or crystallized through it could be through you know the material that is available to the to the artist. Uh, on this uh, premise, we could see that um, the School of Art, Design and Printing, that is uh, the Department of Fine Art, is actually out to celebrate the. 70th um, anniversary of the establishment of uh, the School of Art, Design and Printing, Yaba College Technology. Um, what started as a workshop by a Briton uh, by the name Paul Mount, an expatriate, uh, started in 1952. And um, after running this workshop for some time, uh, our revered icon, Professor Yusuf Grillo, came in and took over from him, uh, which his uh, activities to, together with his subordinates culminate to what we have in what we're celebrating today as uh, 70th uh, anniversary. Uh, the Department of Fine Art is actually using this uh, to connect, I mean, just like the theme of the show, uh, connecting the dots, to connect the past with the, with the present in order to figure out how we can actually you know, uh, fine-tune the future. Um, the current generation of uh, mentors, um, the staff in the department, that is faculty members, uh, we, I would say that um, we actually see the opportunity of the shoulders of the giants uh, to project our voice through our works. And uh, therefore, this particular show is actually meant to honor these people who have um, sacrificed in order to 
have the School of Art, Design and Printing, what we are proud to associate with today. And therefore, uh, these people have uh, uh, contributed immensely to the development of art in Nigeria because actually when it comes to um, uh, high institution education in Nigeria, especially in the realm of art, it started in Yaba Club Technology. So with this, uh, the exhibition you'll be seeing is actually you know, having participants from different departments. Mind you, uh, we have a final department, different uh, six department in the, in the, in the uh, uh, what's it called, in the school. And um, fine art happens to be one of them. And um, the need to, for us to actually celebrate this particular epoch making event is very critical in view of what uh, the, our progenitors have uh, contributed. Therefore, uh, we actually, you know, uh, are having participants from other departments too, like from fashion, industrial design, uh, graphics, printing, uh, and industrial. We have participants from that. I mean, this actually, you know, a height, I mean, a, a, a points to the fact that there's a kind of camaraderie amongst the, uh, uh, among the, uh, 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 the mentors we have in here. And uh, because our job is to, to mentor young, creative, uh, young creatives and um, the need for us to come together to showcase what we are actually uh, teaching, impacting is very important. And um, that is what we've demonstrated through this particular gathering. Aside from uh, you know, demonstrating our studio uh, trajectories, it's also a way of you know, demonstrating to the, uh, our mentees regarding what we are also doing as uh, art researchers and practitioners. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, like I said earlier on, we have a participant not only from FINA, but other departments, other faculties in the School of Art, Design and Printing. And um, in total, we have in about, uh, we have in 70 works. This is actually to symbolically represent the 70th anniversary of uh, at the School of Art, Design, and Printing. And um, you come, you know, the, the works we have in around, you know, uh, uh, come in different material, different, you know, forms, both in two and three Ds, mixed media, right? Uh, just like the work I'm having beside me here, this is one of my works in the show, which I titled, it's in series, which I titled, uh, The Drum of Honor. It's actually alludes to uh, the need for us to uh, celebrate those people that have meaningfully contributed to uh, our society. Unfortunately, what we've been having uh, is a uh, decision whereby only those people with deep pockets that are celebrated. But this shouldn't be the practice. The need for us to change this is very important because uh, uh, by honoring the right people, certainly we're passing the right message across to the youth in our society not to think about just make, making money by any means, but it's about the fact that um, when you work diligently, you contribute to the society, certainly you, uh, 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 in due course, you'll be honored. So this is what this uh, particular piece is you know, uh, uh, alluding to, you know, for our society to wake up to its responsibility and acknowledge the contribution of the right people. Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Dr. Chinyane Dubisi. I'm a sculptor and uh, immediate past head of the Department of Fine Art Department, Yaba College of Technology. This is my work. Um, it's a sculptural piece, a relief uh, object, uh, and it's titled Blossom. Yeah, this work is titled Blossom because oftentimes in our life we have blossomed like, uh, and flourished like flowers. That's why we have these flowers here to remind us that we have once or twice flourished. And because of some, so oftentimes we have some difficult moments, we seem to forget that uh, there have been a time when things were good. So this work stands to remind us of the good times so that we use it to forge ahead and know that things will always get better. And the material used here is uh, it's not a common material in this part of the world that's uh, wire mesh but it's a material that is used globally and this work is particularly inspired by an European artist 
uh, named uh, Kendra Hess. She's uh, a female sculptor and she has done so much uh, with wire gauze. So when I saw her work, I decided to try my hands on wire gauze because wire gauze is not a material that I uh, am known with. I prefer carving, but as a sculptor, you can always experience with, uh, experiment with other material, which is what I have done here. And the team, uh, apart from the flourishing aspects that I want us to always remember, that we have flourished and will keep flourishing if we continue to do what we can do best. I decided to focus on animals because animals are creatures, most of them, for instance, like the elephant, they are gradually going into extinction. And um, it's, all, it's even difficult. Some people will live and die without having a personal one-on-one -on -one experience with animals like uh, elephants. Like uh, most of our young ones, they only see um, such animals either on the screen or pages of papers. But one thing that comes to mind is that sculpture is that aspect of art that is close to life. The difference between this uh, elephant or any animal sculpture from life is that they cannot break. But you can experience it just as you can experience uh, living things. And my concentration on um, animals is because Human beings are there, we interact, we see ourselves, we relate with one another, but these animals are not there for us to interact with anymore. So if more artists will pay attention to animals, even when they get extinct, we'll still have them around us. That's basically the idea behind this work. And also to make people know that we sculptors, we experiment with different, we experiment with different materials and there is no limit to sculpture. Every material is a, a medium of expression and that is why we have done Because in this part of the world, when you see chicken, uh, sorry, wire gauze or chicken wire as people call it, the first thing that comes to your mind is cage, poultry for animals. But not everybody or most people will not remember that it can be used for things like this and that is why I'm I chose this material and I've used it and uh, successfully used it. Thank you. Yes, um, my name is um, Akombi Oladayo. I'm a painter, I'm an artist, and also have masters in artistry. The, mo the most important thing is that I paint a lot. I have all kinds of paintings, but the paintings I have is on canvas, is titled Unity. Unity is about the, the, the tribes, the three major tribes we have in Nigeria, the Igbo, the Yoruba, and the Hausas. This painting is done to bring us together as one. And most importantly, I want to say, without unity, there's no purpose and goal. The goal of life is to be able to indicate that life is such an embodiment of challenges and success. So I want to believe that with that, a lot of things are bound to happen when it comes to painting. And also paintings reflect the society. Our society is such a wonderful thing that we need to know that society is bound to grow and society cannot grow without an artist's contribution to the sources of the society. This painting titled uh, Peace and uh, titled Unity Peace and unity, also the, 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 the color scheme is blue, which blue, blue signifies love, and love signifies unity and bond. So the bond is there. So apart from being an artist, I'm also into other things. But God loves me, I'm looking forward to a lot of things, and God will be with me, and I'm happy that I'm able to partake in this exhibition. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, my name is uh, Dr. Emmanuel Iro Kanolo. I started my education here some uh, 30 something years ago and completed in Zaria. For me, art is conversation that has to do with modern uh, issues. So, what art does is to reflect the happening in society in a contemporary way. Okay, now, uh, how do our art tell African story? We we currently struggling to distance ourselves from the neo uh, post-colonial art 
um, activity to more of African uh, way of uh, narration. And that you could see mostly in our works, especially if you look at uh, Ayo's work, you see more of that. Then my work is more of abstraction. I started from figurative, which you can see over there, and uh, more into the uh, realm of abstract. And that's where I am now. I think that's okay. Okay. My name is Rashid Amadou. I'm an artist, art historian, and critic, as well as an art consultant based in Lagos. I've been practicing since 1985 when I finished my apprenticeship from a graphic artist, which is late now, DGS yet. But after practice for some time, I decided to go back to school. So I I was admitted to the Obafemi Oloh University, Ileife. That was where I was introduced to abstract art, art and stylized art, art forms, which I have improved upon till date. Training at first as a graphic artist and a down-to-earth artist, while being an apprenticeship in the early 80s, late 70s and early 80s, I was into realism, naturalism, and all that. But then gaining admission into the University of Ife before it became a from university, I had to move on to abstract rendering, stylization, African traditional art form, improving on them, improving, inculcating them, inputting them to my work, which is what I basically do in contemporary times. My works are essentially abstract abstract form just like my work on display in this exhibition which is a power mask evolution by title is an innovation from the epa elephant mask tradition of the yoruba kiti people the epa is a janus element address or mask or times whereby it has to tell the story it's a commemorative ad addresses or mass. It has to tell the story of the departed ones that the uh, EPA has been, the artist has been commissioned to cast. So, if you are a warrior now, if the late person, ancestor, or phobia of the family who commissioned me, or the individual commissioned me, if the person is a king, the upper part of the EPA mass, the superstructure part, has to reveal has to reflect his kingship, his royalty essence, and his achievement. In most cases, you have to reflect the achievement of the person that the mask was commissioned for, to remain remembrance of the late individual. In this case, the Epa mask evolution, I try to portray an Epa mask that is commissioned for an electric and electronic merchant. So, this is the lower part where there are the faces, the mouth area, the opening for the eyes, and the here. It has been attracted, but you can see the two and the mouth region. And then instead of the back, the big eyes, like the all seeing eyes of the departed ancestor is here. But since the departed there is an electronic and electrical machine that has some electronic products, like the boiling rings like the charger, phone charger, the remote controls, and at times it's a mark. I have some shaving clips too that I can diversify. She, he or she diversify and other call. Then the farm bed from cars and automobiles. I have them to reflect that the person that this farmers was commissioned for is a trader, a business merchant who basically be mostly in electrical products. And but it's an evolutionary one because this is it is not carved after reflecting and interpreting an abstract form, though the symbolic essence is still there. And I have some traditional decorative motifs too that are strictly from the Yoruba cultural traditional carving as well. Then I balance it with the colors to show some mini creative approach and modern contemporary essence. Art, generally, is a way of telling the story of life. 
We artists tend to reflect who we are and the world around us. That is part some of the best artworks you can get from artists. But in some cases too, the artists can be futuristic, procrastinating, or bringing something from the past. In this type of work that I do, I bring something from the past, which is still happening to today, which is the Epa elephant traditional culture among the Ekiti, Yoruba and Ekiti state, which is still commonplace. Though the advent of Christianity, Islam have kind of reduced the involvement of the total police, but is still taking part. So my heart generally is not less to reflect the traditional African culture giving it a contemporary nuance, contemporary portrayal. And since art essentially is about creating beautiful sensational aesthetics per se to improve the world, to beautify the society around you, that is where the colors come in and the story behind it to all complete the projection of an artist and his or her artworks. I would like to state that being an, a seasoned artist now, an adult, improved artist, I would like to advise the younger artists to try and pacify and be consistent. The more you do it, the more you improve. Just like they say, practice makes perfection. Without constant practicing, constant churning out of artwork, you cannot really improve. It's not about theory, it's not about just talking about art. It's about practice. It's about doing it consistently. Not just concentrating on what we sell. What about the money? Yes, you need the money to survive. You need it as much as anybody. But you must have that belief. And it's good to be original, not to copy. When you get to a certain stage, you stop trying to copy other artists. You just have to improve and create your own work of art. Art essentially is what you give him that comes back to you. You can't cheat nature. And that is what art is all about. Even in some of my paintings, because in some of my pure paintings, you will still see the motif, some of the motif that I had there. You will still see them and you see a more or less flat back now because it's two dimensional. This is more or less, I've used the items, the object here, to kind of create it's an assemblage, like mixed media assemblage work, because there are objects, found objects, and objects that are no more being used, employed, that have now added on board here to create this creative, wonderful art piece. And I would say it's been worth the while. It's been really worth my while. It's beautiful, it's interesting. The Yaba Tech High School when they are now 78 year anniversary. That is since 1952, founded by Paul Mount. Then before it later passed it on to the first indigenous director, Professor Yusuf Grillo of Blessed Memory. And they have been waxing stronger and stronger and stronger till date. And that shows you things just have to keep evolving. Whether it's sad or whatever. The only thing that's constant in nature is change, and that's where they are today. Something that started from a bungalow, a small building, a small space, has now gone into probably the biggest edifice in this campus, in Yaba College of Technology. And Yaba Tech is renowned globally as a frontline art school in Nigeria and Africa and across the continent. So I would say it's a wonderful job, a great exhibition for the Yaba Art School, the departments, fine art department, another department like the graphic department, the fashion department, the industrial art department, and others. It's really great. And you, if you go around, you see works from all these different departments. And I believe the future is still not the limit. The sky is not the limit. Because keep on, things just have to keep on evolving and evolving. So I'll say thank you at this point in time. It's been worth it. I've been with him for a long time. Understand how much growing is in his work. 
Uh, this is Omoligo Udenta, whom we have to scale down because she actually makes very large installations and we've uh, been able to have it in a small form. She does a lot of work with paper flowers, uh, malleable material in different ways with the focus on the female subject. Um, this is uh, Aderi Soye Alatebo Wikina. We don't, uh, when we speak of the words, we do not come like <laughs> Because the heart speaks for itself. It's Hunter in the Wild. Um, his work is um, uh, very reminiscent of uh, early, um, early Zaria uh, with um, the artists that you know did a lot of uh, pouring and drawing at the time and he keeps at it because he's explored into other materials and sustained the pouring method in his work. This is him down. So, when you find something, you have to go close and find his signature first because he works with anything and everything. Uh, in this work, he uh, called it, titled it. So it's endless in its interpretation. You see the cityscape, you see everyone with their phones in this world that we're in. That a lot of the young people now are just glued to these phones. So it's a very apt image of uh, the city now. This that thing in our collection is Color Day with production, it's uh, in the use of plastography, but this particular one is metal. Uh, but he does a lot of um, experimentation with plastography and leans into the Bruce uh line of, you know, uh, um, for each production for printmaking. Uh, they just uh, finished the uh, printmaking show in Honor too. And um, it's called Blossom. When it came, I called it the rat. <laughs> because the baby elephant is such a large uh, animal. But there's so much detail onto the layering of this uh, sculpture piece. And she's married something that is very sturdy with materials that are very light to use. Uh, we carry our baby everywhere we go. <laughs> we carry our baby everywhere we go. And um, it's a cement cast. And cement cast works are known not to last. They get uh, um, into accidents a lot. And if anything hits them, they can crack, they can break. But this one has to be older than me. So it stood the, te <laughs> it stood the test of time. Um, that right behind you, man, is something that we continue to discuss because it says, uh, it's by uh, Adere Soya Ladimogwe and it's the travail of oil well. I don't need to say anything more. I know. <laughs> I, <laughs> from, from, you will already have the feel of the oil rig and then all our Nigerian, <laughs> our Nigerian people Betty in Agadaz <laughs> on this issue of the oil well. It's abstract but you get the message uh, immediately in, in the presentation right behind. It speaks to the old Baba festivals that a lot of our traditions are winding down. Uh, it's, it's, it's such a great issue because this, our um, culture is our greatest export that we can sell and we need to do something to save it.